tonight on American Greed Bonus Edition. It's a dangerous job. But Carlos Rafael, AKA the Codfather, makes a killing in commercial fishing. His secret? Lying and cheating. This is his way of life, to break the law repeatedly. Rafael is salty. That's it, that's look at me. He's really kind of a character. He's very funny, he's really profane. So f all of you. And he can't stop bragging, which makes the Codfather easy to catch on tape. I don't man wants to put me in jail for price fixing. Because I control the law of the market in the bedroom. But how will the feds respond when they learn the Codfather's secret sauce includes a sheriff's deputy smuggling cash. You have to understand, that's where 9-11 started, Boston Logan Airport. And now we're hearing about a law enforcement officer circumventing security at that same airport. New Bedford, Massachusetts is a small port city that typically attracts tourists and fishermen. But in June 2015, two self-described Russian mobsters show up in town. They say they are looking for a place to stash more than $100 million in cash. Their best bet is Carlos Rafael, the crude boss of the New Bedford waterfront who has a fleet of 32 fishing boats worth millions. The Russians tell Rafael they want to buy his business, but first, they need to see his books. In response, Rafael makes a joke. You could be the IRS and this could be a plus the <laughs> And then he thinks again. No, the only thing I don't know myself because he is hoping is the Russians. I don't think they would have to. <laughs> the Russians laugh, but the joke is on Raphael. They are the IRS, and this undercover operation is off to a good start. They are now confident they will learn the secrets of the man who has earned the nickname the Codfather. Rafael's story begins in the Azores Islands off the coast of Portugal, where he is born. In 1968, he convinces his family to move to America. He came here from Portugal approximately at the age of 15. He doesn't have much education. He doesn't really know the language. He gets a job on the docks in New Bedford, and he just stays there. In coming to New Bedford, Rafael's family is following generations of Portuguese fishermen who have come to this famous port. It was once the center of the whaling industry. But when whaling dies, the money here moves to what is called ground fish. Haddock, flounder, and the fish that America was founded on, cod. Cod was the reason a lot of the colonists came here because they were so abundant. It was literally the first industry in the country. By the 1970s, when Rafael is settling into New Bedford, enormous factory ships from around the world are close by, making off with millions of pounds of fish each day. They would process fish 24 hours, seven days a week. Fishermen who were around at that time have said it looked like Manhattan out there. There were so many lights of the boats parked, even just 60 or 70 miles offshore. The fleets of foreign boats are legally in international waters. But the presence of Soviet fishing boats lurking just offshore does not sit well with Americans. And so in 1976, Congress kicks out the foreigners and establishes a zone of 200 offshore miles as exclusive to the United States. And then the government offers subsidized loans to U.S. fishermen. Now, they had to build up the American fisheries because we were nothing, and they just started handing out free money. 
At the time, Jim Kendall is well into his career as a scallop fisherman. Anybody who wanted to build a boat and find a small down payment could go get it. And that is when Carlos Rafael launches his career in the fishing industry. For a young Azorian like Carlos, Quebecer was a place of opportunity, and he certainly took advantage of that. While working as a fish cutter, Rafael gets a loan in 1980 and opens Carlos Seafood, a fish processing plant. Soon after, he buys his first boats, perfectly positioning himself to rake in big money. He has his own captains on his own boats catching the fish. When those fish come into port, those boats are selling the fish to his own business. And his timing could not be better. His introduction to being a, a fishing operation in New England was this chaos of sort of a free-for-all. And the message, quite literally, was there's a lot of fish out there to catch. Go catch them. And while Raphael may enjoy fishing for fun, for business, he sends his captains out to catch the fish. He stays on the shore. No, no, he was never a true fisherman. Carlos was a lot of things, but that's one thing he can't claim. And for many, that is a significant distinction. Because professional fishermen are people who routinely head out into treacherous waters in what is still one of the most dangerous professions in the country. People who've been out at sea, they learn humility. You look at a big wave or a big storm, you understand humility. And most every fisherman I know has that humility. There's not an ounce of humility in Carlos Raphael. Almost everyone who meets him learns that. As he tells the IRS undercover agents, he is among the smartest guys on the docks. I know things that a lot of people don't know what they in this business. Some of them, they think they know a lot of they know. And one of the most important things Raphael knows is that to succeed, he needs lots of boats. Bigger is always better. If you are a small farmer and you have one cow to get milk for the baby, the cow dies young. You don't have milk for the baby. If you are a big farmer and you got a hundred cows and the cow dies, you get the bulldozer, you take a hole to the cow and when you got 99, you're still up the rate. <laughs> He's really kind of a character. He's sort of a loud, boisterous guy. He's very funny. He's really profane. He is memorable. As Carlos Rafael's business grows, it appears that his story is a classic tale of an immigrant achieving the American dream. Here's a, a young man who moved here from his homeland at a very young age with a little formal education and worked some very hard jobs on the docks and eventually saved money to build up a business. And that's laudable in the most fundamental ways that we Americans value. But Raphael's story is more complicated. Early on, people who do business with him learn to be careful. Well, if I shook hands with him, I guess I'd count my fingers after I got through shaking hands with him based on his reputation. It is no secret that Raphael will agree to pay a price for a load of fish at the morning auction, but it is often not a final price. The one time that Carlos bought my trip, I actually ended up not selling the Carlos because he tried to cut the price that he had agreed to pay and I refused to, to let him do so. Raphael says he is just protecting his business. You're gonna say he's a rough little business man. Well, did he have a body off? Did he have a body kick? He said he got But it's one thing to gouge fishermen and another to cheat the U.S. government. For years, Raphael thinks the U.S. can wait for his tax payments. But the IRS disagrees. He's prosecuted for tax evasion by my office 
in 1986. And he was convicted in that case. Rafael serves four months in prison. 